So, hey guys, welcome back out to the garden. Can you believe it? It is October 5th and my garden still looks like this. But the crazy thing is about this time of the year, you never know in like five days from now, we could have snow, we could have a deep freeze, we could have freezing rain. So I'm just not gonna chance uh, much more in my garden. Today is the day I've been waiting for all garden season and we're gonna harvest the sweet potatoes. As I mentioned in the last video, I have no idea how I'm gonna go about doing this. Actually, I can feel one under my foot right here. <laughs> really? So I think what my plan of attack is, is I'm gonna pull the vines and we'll go from there. Okay, sound good? Yep. <laughs> I told you I could feel one. Hold on, he's gonna bring it up and show you. Look at those. First They're two. beautiful. Yay. Let's do this. So this here is some perspective before you, before we get too far into this, this bed of sweet potatoes. <laughs> Holy cow, that vine was like 12 feet long. Um, this, this bed, when she planted them, they were about six feet this way. And <laughs> she's already excited down there. And then this way, it's about 18 feet. So six feet by 18 feet is the, uh, the size of the sweet potato bed. There's still some flowering going on. There's actually one of our honeybees right there on that flower right there. So guys, when I pulled this one, I said to Todd, I've got to remind them how I planted this. And so this bed has uh, been a Ruth Stout garden bed for, this is the second season. Um, last year I just got from my neighbor. He has a big pasture out back that he lets grow for the wildlife every year and then he cuts it down every fall. So I went and got a lot of his pasture uh, hay cuttings and put a big huge thick layer, I would say at least eight inches deep um, as my fall mulch. And then in the spring when I got the slips, and if you don't know what a sweet potato slip is, it's it basically kind of looks like a single tiny leaf with some roots on it. And I took those roots and I literally just pulled back. So I basically, you know, picture this has roots on it. I picked up the hay and I laid it on it and I did like that. And that is what I got. <laughs> I love this method. It's so freaking easy. So I'm gonna get in here and continue harvesting, um, but I'm already thrilled with the one beautiful sweet potato I've gotten. <laughs> that one's giant. It's like a cucumber. Oh, it's so pretty though. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, don't break. Oh, broke. But it seems to work well to, uh, oh, look at this one was coming out of the ground. Oh, yeah. You can find where the where the vines go into the ground. And if you just dig around right there, there's a nice little cluster. One, two, three, four. Oh, oh. look at that, a fatty. <laughs> yeah, it seems like we don't really need the fork if you. Yeah, it's kind of weird, uh, so this one plant right here produced uh, four, five little sweet potatoes. Honestly, guys, you, why I'm so excited is sweet potatoes are my absolute favorite vegetable. And when I learned that I could grow them up here in Michigan by accident last year, oh, it's 
like Christmas. Oh. Oh. So happy. <laughs> Yay. Oh, 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 oh my God. Come to mama. Oh. <laughs> They're coming right out of the ground. So when we first started this garden bed, it was just grass. We cut it down really low and we threw in thick layers of hay, um, no, straw at the time because I was using it as a potato bed. And I want to show you guys how good the soil is looking now after two years and how loose it is. So it's just amazing. Just absolutely beautiful and amazing and so much organic matter in here and life with little bugs and worms. And this old pasture hay is breaking down really nicely. There's still even some old straw remnants from the year before. So I'm gonna keep saying it. I love her. Ruth Stout is amazing. Oh, hold on, this one. Yeah. Well, but some of them broke honey doing it that way. Did it? Yeah. Okay. We need to be more careful then. Yeah. They're growing through the fence. <laughs> oh no. Oh, sweet. <laughs> Those okay. aren't sweet potatoes. No. Holy cow. Hey, look at this. <laughs> oh man. That's a giant one. Heck yeah. What seems to be working well for us is if I just keep rolling the vines until I find a cluster, like where there's a cluster of sweet potatoes, I'm taking my pocket knife and I'll cut the vines and just keep rolling them. That way this acts as like a little airplane day. This will act as a marker for Rachel to come through behind me and, and know that there's some presence under here for her. I remember when that. Oh, I broke it. Remember in the spring? Yeah. How much rain we got yeah. and how this was so flooded. And yeah. They flooded over my sweet potato slips when I planted them. And I was yeah. so worried that they were going to die. And I remember like walking by so many times and it's like, well, it looks like we only got about four plants left. They're all dying. Yeah. But then as summer went on, things mm -hmm. dried out and they Mm -hmm. just fine. So another thing, one of the main reasons I want to get this harvested is my garlic is arriving today and this is the garlic bed for next year. So I'm trying to get um, priorities caught up in my garden. So what I'm surprised by is that um, they do reroot themselves and start to try to grow new sweet potatoes. Like okay. strawberry runners, kind yeah, of? Yeah, kind of. I didn't know that they would do that. This one's all curled up. Yes. Is it Woo, nice. Beautiful. When we get done, we'll come through with a rake and rake the top layer back and expose this dirt and see what we missed. Yeah. Purple potatoes. Nice. It's a nice one. Oh, yeah. Oh, good. That's what a surprise. I didn't even plan any. It's one of the benefits of having sandy soil is you can just kind of shake the sweep. <laughs> it looks like a, <laughs> a foot. Some of them definitely go deep. Yep. 
but that's what I started to say. That's the benefit of having the sandy soil is it's really good growing conditions for sweet potatoes. Oh, look at this one. Oh yeah, that's funny. Pull him out. He's nice. Look at this one, Rachel. Aww. It started growing out the top. Yeah. So guys, I'm super, super pleased with this harvest. I'm sure it goes without failing when you're gardening and you're putting it out in the YouTube world that somebody's gonna tell you what you could have done for a better harvest and that's not that great. But the thing is, is I'm a very low maintenance gardener. I do not fertilize, I do not water very regularly anyway, unless there was to be like a drought situation, I might turn on the sprinkler. But I think I turned on the sprinkler this year no kidding, maybe four times. Um, and <laughs> I'm just beyond tickled pink with these sweet potatoes. I can't wait to make sweet potato pie, sweet potato casserole, baked sweet potatoes, oh, candied sweet potatoes. We might even make sweet potato ice cream. I don't know. I just want to make sweet potato everything. So. Thanks guys for watching. And if you didn't think that you could grow sweet potatoes in a northern climate, we're here in southeast Michigan. Give it a try next year. Beauregard variety is the variety that I grew this year and it did wonders for me. Planted at the beginning of June, it is the first week of October and here I am harvesting. Thanks guys. Love you, appreciate you always and happy gardening wherever you are.